if you know me, uh, uh, the last we met was during the API testing webinar. And today we'll look uh, how we can do the test automation using Selenium. So I hope uh, you will enjoy this session as much as I will enjoy delivering you about the content for the Selenium. So let's see uh, what are what are we gonna cover in this webinar. So first of all, uh, we look at why do we need and when do we need to automate our test. And I I, I hope uh, first of all when I say automation, so I hope you are you are clear with the basic fundamentals of what is automation. So to to be in a nutshell, um, automation test automation is uh, nothing but uh, whatever repetition do we we do uh, while doing the manual testing of any application under test, we need to find a way to <clears throat> to automate it so that uh, we do not need any manual manual intervention in that. So there are there are a couple uh, quite a quite a lot of examples available for this. So maybe when you fill up a form. Or of any uh, of any any of your application, let's say your application allows users to register as well. So in that case, also you can just automate the workflow of filling the form and saving the data to database. Plus, you can also do the automation of validating the same data from the uh, UI, of course, UI of the application. So we need to find out uh, why do we automate our application under test or when do we automate? Is it always feasible to automate an application or we need to be careful what and what not to automate? So after that, uh, we'll see what all tools are available as of now for automating our test. And then we'll go to the Selenium, its introduction and the various flavors available with the Selenium, just like the grid, web driver, and IDE. And then uh, we'll look how to set up the Selenium with Java. So we'll also look at uh, Selenium is uh, available with most of the uh, famous uh, object-oriented languages, just like Java, C Sharp, Python. But uh, for now, we will, for today, we will see how to set up Selenium uh, with Java. And also, uh, I'll, I'll try and give a short uh, demo of uh, the first Selenium script. It will be a very simple script. Uh, what it will do is it will read a text from a file. I have a text file, txt file, in which I have put some, put some text. And then I'll uh, read that text from a file, and I'll, and I'll uh, try and search that text on a Google search engine. So that's the workflow we are going to automate today. So. Uh, once done that, then we will see how uh, how actually Selenium allows us to automate our application. So while going this, I'll just brief you about different types of locators and how we can find and use every, each of them. And we'll we'll end with a small description of what is what exactly is the framework. So I hope uh, I hope. I, this will be useful for you and you'll enjoy this session. So let's start with the Selenium. So a brief about uh, Tech Canvas. So as it says, Tech Canvas specializes in the automation testing and the business analysis testing. And also as, uh, as Jitesh also mentioned that they have a couple of branches in Mumbai. And they are also endorsed in I, IIBA, IIBA endorsed provider, and they also specialize in the agile testing alliance with the PCP. And they do conduct the courses for Selenium professional and advanced ones, the APM, and also the automation testing in the agile projects. So I hope uh, this will be useful for you. Let's see the test automation now. So, uh, as I said, what exactly is this test automation and why and when do we need it? So, uh, when, when while doing the manual testing, we, we come across a certain, uh, certain terms like test data and also the prerequisites that we have to do 
So and also uh, the ultimate aim of our testing is to compare the actual outcomes with what is the expected outcomes. So uh, automation, as I said earlier, it is nothing but uh, by finding some way to avoid the repetitive work and let our code do do the repetition for us. For an example, as I I I give a very small example of filling the user uh, user form, or else like uh, let letting the users save uh, their details in our database in, in your application database, and uh, also uh, we can also uh, find and let's say you are from the e-commerce domain, so you can try and see. Uh, you can uh, you can try and automate the search of a product, ordering of a, adding adding your cart to a product. So this this all you can do manually, but somehow uh, when 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 there are times like the regression for which the client pays us the for the continuous valued output, because anyways in the industry what everybody is interested in uh, in are the long-term durability and long-term usability of the product so uh, of course uh, client will uh, your, your client or, or whoever is interested or your stakeholders of the project will somehow find try and find and evaluate the ways in which they can they can reduce the cost and they can just uh, get the they can get the return of their investment so you might uh, hear this term return on investments quite often when you are in the test automation field. So it's it's a uh, keeping in simple terms. Uh, it's like investing once and just seeing your investments working every time you have a new software patch or new software release. So that's a very basic of the automation. And uh, as we have as we have here, like the automation process has to have some manual process handy because uh, as I said, uh, we cannot start, just start with the automation. So whenever automating, you have to keep in mind that testing and automation are two different things. While testing, you will apply all your, uh, all your methods like the, uh, sorry, the exploratory testing, or many of the testing methodologies like the boundary level testing and not uh, so on. So testing and as I said, testing and automation are two different things. So even if you are automating your application, one thing you have to keep in mind that before automating, you first try, try and do the exploratory testing of your application. Uh, I think someone is, uh, yeah, please. Can you mute? Uh, yeah, thank you. So, yeah. So, uh, for any automation, you first need to perform all your tests manually in order to see if your application is robust enough, and the builds which developers gave us are stable enough to perform automation on. Because uh, the core point of automation is uh, that you you are not supposed you are supposed to avoid as much as as much as of the manual intervention as possible so once uh, there are there are scenarios wherein uh, you have continuous integration uh, environment deployed and what happens is let's say you have 1000 and 1200 plus or test cases that are written by all of the manual testers and somehow you are able to automate 1000 of them so the idea behind the automation is that whenever those thousand are running, you are not supposed to be there, or you are not supposed to stay till the thousand test cases get over. So you are just uh, you are allowed to go home, you are allowed to sleep, you are allowed to what do what what do what or you want. So the nutshell is uh, you have to you have to make your automation so robust that it goes on on its own, and to to make this possible, you have to ensure that the environment on which you are testing or the build which you are testing is robust enough it does not has the simple defects like uh, unit testing not properly done or the some of the pages are not working properly so to ensure all that you you have to first go through the smoke testing and then do some manual testing on your part 
and then proceed towards automation. And there will be a couple of scenarios uh, wherein you will feel that uh, doing this stuff manually will definitely save your time. So you have to keep in mind those scenarios as well and uh, and do not try and automate that because ultimately it's it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be an overhead for you. For an example, let's say you are doing some type of validation testing, just like just to see if the if on scrolling there are uh, there are some uh, elements in the page which are not getting disturbed or some sort of a visual testing. So I know there are some tools uh, that can help you doing the visual testing as well. But uh, you will not able you will not be able to achieve that hundred percent in an effective manner. But uh, if considered very logically, you will not try and automate this as well. So the things which are really very easy to be done manually and which do not extend your overhead of coding, uh, I'll, I'll suggest and everyone will suggest that please do not try and automate it. So let's move forward. So uh, let's have a look at how, what all tools do we have for the automation testing. So the horizontal axis here uh, is the different requirements that we have nowadays. And the vertical axis, uh, we have multiple tools listed here so, uh, with which we can uh, automate. So we are currently considering uh, Selenium for this, uh, for this webinar. So, uh, as you can see on the horizontal axis, uh, there are, with the advent of Web 2.0, uh, there are multiple uh, uh, multiple features we can put, uh, we can uh, we can embed with our web applications like the HTML5, the .NET support, uh, the advanced CSS, JavaScript, jQuery. So all might not be listed here. One we have Silverlight for from the Microsoft. So all these features uh, are available with which, uh, which make our web applications or the mobile applications much more uh, beautiful to look and much more handy and useful. Also with the, uh, with the advent of the mobile technologies uh, in the near, near time, we have much of the Android, iOS and Windows mobile in market. So Customers are rapidly moving towards them and making apps instead of the websites just to make uh, the reach of their product more uh, more quick. So, and also, of course, the different types of browsers and different features these browsers support like IE, Chrome, Firefox. So, uh, going on to the vertical list, we can see that uh, this list is a combination of the license as well as free tool. Of course, the free tool available here is just Selenium, which was uh, developed by ThoughtWorks. So uh, we can see uh, these tools are, uh, are actually very costly, uh, considering the QTP. So, for an example, so just eight thousand dollars are for the development on each of your machine, and eight hundred dollars as a plus amount uh, when sorry eight thousand dollars addition when you are trying and executing your scripts on a, on a machine. So $16,000 just for doing the automation. Of course, QTP also gives us all supports like API testing and testing with the different browsers. But uh, uh, we'll try and see how, how, to, how we can achieve the same using Selenium. And looking at the features uh, these different tools provide. So as you can see, uh, not all uh, tools provide all the features. So let's take an example of the comparison between Test Complete and Selenium. So by paying almost $5,000 here, what we are able to achieve is everything but not the Windows Mobile. And for the same functionality can be achieved, obviously uh, not uh, all, but uh, Selenium provides maximum of those um, functionalities for free. Let's say it, it doesn't provide support for Windows Mobile, but uh, nowadays it has started providing support uh, for .NET itself. Uh, here, .NET support means that uh, your browser capabilities to handle .NET calls and not uh, how you can automate the scripts in .NET. So please do not get confused with that. 
So uh, I think uh, this more is self-explanatory and we'll not invest much of our time here. We'll try and see how, what all, what, what different we, do we have with Selenium. Let's move forward. Uh, a brief introduction about Selenium. So as I said, it's an open source. It's free to automate our web applications across, across different browsers and platforms. Uh, it's not only limited to the web applications. Uh, you can also try and automate uh, your uh, your uh, your mobile apps, but definitely not the desktop applications. Selenium is not made for them. For automating the desktop applications, you can you can have a look at the QTP or Auto IT. There are uh, different tools available. Uh, what what exactly is Selenium? So Selenium is is an we can we can term it as an API or as a framework which uh, which supports our different needs of automation of the application so uh, I'll, I'll pause uh, I'll pause uh, here for a minute and let's discuss or let me tell you what exactly do we do uh, when when we try and automate an application so when I say that I want to automate the uh, the user registration form what exactly I'm trying and doing it so Let's say my form has few fields like first name, last name, date of birth, mobile number, email, and a save button. So uh, what manually I do is I uh, I type that my I type all the details like my name, age, date of birth, email, mobile, and then I click on the save button. So exactly the same process uh, we are trying to achieve using automation. So. Uh, what basic requirement our automation uh, needs is uh, we should be able to type our text in the text box. We should be able to select our date of birth in the date combo. And then we should be able to uh, obviously fill all the details and then we should be able to click on the save button. So uh, the different requirements I got here are first of all entering the text entering my uh, details like mobile and email and everything and then clicking on the save button of course this is a very simple example we are talking about um, so that's it uh, what what different needs we, uh, we came across is like entering and clicking so selenium is an api or is it just it is a suit uh, that enables us to cater all all of these needs to click on a button to select the radio button to select a checkbox, to select a drop-down value, or even uh, mouse over on something, drag and drop some elements. Of course, uh, that is a uh, very, uh, very far we are talking about. But for the introduction part, I think uh, this is uh, this is what we are we can uh, we can describe Selenium for. So on the lighter side, as you can see, the image. Uh, of selenium and mercury hd is for hd is the uh, chemical equivalent of uh, not i'm very bad with the chemistry so i'll say the chemical symbol for the mercury is hd and mercury was the company who started creating the qtp so uh, on the lighter side we can take it as selenium is trying to remove mercury as it is a free open source and crowd is completely uh, rapidly moving towards selenium and toward uh, or compared to what previously we used to have QTP. So uh, of course it was created in back in 2004 uh, by Jason Huggins uh, in ThoughtWorks. So an interesting fact about ThoughtWorks I, I came across when I was trying to learn in, uh, learn Selenium. So what I came to know is that in ThoughtWorks uh, people never people try and avoid manual testing as much as they can. So for whatever they want to test, they try and automate it by creating some custom built APIs or by writing some code for themselves. So Selenium was just a byproduct of what they were trying to build to test their applications. So that's it. Uh, I think enough introduction for Selenium. We have much to cover on the sample test script. Let's go ahead. So these are different flavors of the Selenium. As I said, Selenium is a is a is a framework, or is it a it, it is a suit for testing our uh, applications under different needs. So we have uh, 
couple of options like IDE. I hope IDE uh, everyone is aware of. It is an acronym for Integrated Development Environment, which eases your your coding process or whatever you are trying to achieve. Uh, unless IDE, uh, you have to script uh, your your code. You have to write your code in Notepad or something like that. So when we have Selenium IDE, which is uh, which is a Firefox extension, it's not available in any of the browser. Uh, we we we'll have a located. We have a separate slide for it. We drop there. Uh, another option we have is Selenium Remote Control. Uh, it is actually an older version of the Selenium, and uh, what uh, we'll we'll definitely try and look at this as well. Uh, I, I really want to quick, uh, cover it quickly. So there are two components mainly that were actually very rapidly used for. Uh, application and the test, especially for the web applications. So one was Selenium Remote Control, and another was the Web Driver. We will see how they look. So, but now they both are merged, and uh, we have Selenium 2 in position. Now they both are merged, and now we have Selenium 2 instead of uh, separate Remote Control and Web Driver. Uh, the another thing what we have with Selenium is the grid. So very basic about grid is uh, imagine a scenario wherein uh, you are required to test your application in all of the different browsers. Example, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari. So grid helps you to do the parallel testing of your one test case uh, running parallelly on all of the four browsers or whatever browsers you want. So grid supports multiple browsers and even Selenium supports many of the browsers, the famous browsers like Safari, Chrome, Firefox, IE, and also the Opera. So uh, these are the browsers that are supported. So let's lo have a look at Selenium IDE. So the, as you can see, uh, the window on, window on the left hand side is the IDE console, which is nothing but the Firefox plugin. Uh, what it allows us to do is, uh, it this, if, can, if you can see the red button, it will allow you to record your test. For an example, uh, you want to you want to automate your Gmail login. So what you can do is, uh, once you click the red button, then uh, you, whatever uh, actions you do on your uh, on your uh, browser, for an example, Mozilla Firefox. So it will allow you to uh, whatever you do, like user, you put username, you put password, and then you click on sign in. So, so just like mentioned here, uh, you 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 will be able to see your commands are recorded here, and when you play this, it will open. It will just repeat what you recorded, and it will repeat n number of times as and when you will play this recording or recording. So you will see that it opens up the browser, it puts the username, it puts the password, and then it clicks on the submit button. So this was a very simple example, and of course, uh, it you can uh, you can definitely find some more features here. Uh, for an example, uh, you want to you can export the this test uh, in any of the language you want. Let's say you are familiar with Java, you are familiar with .NET or Python. You can export this test, or uh, you can definitely try and modify these steps here. You, uh, as uh, as we can see, the user has tried and put the Selenium ID rocks text here in some search button, which which has a locator with Q. And uh, you can try and change these values. You can put some assertions. So uh, this all you can achieve uh, using Selenium IDE. This is good. Uh, so far, your tests are very limited, and your requirement is pretty simple. But when it comes to uh, the complex scenarios wherein you have to uh, design a framework for the ever scaling applications, for an example, um, let's say your applications has a few modules. Take an example for an insurance application. So it has different modules like claim processing, reimbursements, or whatnot. Um, 
customer intimations uh, payments so uh, there are there could be different modules in your application so uh, there will be definitely a need wherein uh, a different module needs to be fit in your existing application criteria so which definitely can involve some sort of application changes so these recorded scripts might not work at that time and you have to come up with a more robust approach because as i said earlier uh, what customers are in interested in is that uh, they want to invest just once in uh, in testing of app application especially in the automation of the application and they just want to see their application working so even if there is a change they will of course they will allow you to minimal uh, minimalistic changes for a uh, automation code or for a, a automation uh, framework changes but this recording does not involve your automation framework at all so this is okay if you are trying to test very basic uh, workflows of your application and not the complex ones let's move forward so coming to web driver so as we saw uh, uh, in the previous slides we had remote control and we had web driver so combinedly now we have selenium 2.0 web driver so remote control is out of picture nowadays a brief about remote control which i don't think uh, is much useful to now much, much useful to you now because even if you take any trainings uh, you will be just you will see you are uh, completely trained on web driver not on the remote control so uh, with remote control uh, you you were supposed to have a server running on some of the machine which uh, used to intercept all the all the calls that you send on your browser in this case a client so i'll many a times refer client for a uh, client as a term for the browser so please don't get confused with it so it used to intercept all the calls that you make to a client and you you were able to see that uh, json calls or many uh, sorry not json but other type of calls on your server screen it was a simple command from console uh, not much and you were able to see all the workflows all the commands that are being shooted to your client so let's not invest much of our time on the remote control let's look at the web driver so as i said uh, selenium web driver allows you to interact with the multiple browsers that are listed here just like chrome opera firefox ie and also uh, it has support for the many of the uh, almost all of the uh, object oriented famous languages like java .NET, ruby python perl so you can any of the you can use any of the language you are familiar with or you are good to code with so let's move forward so what exactly is this web driver uh, so uh, we will see that how how uh, when we when we will look at how we should set up our environment with the selenium java and eclipse so we will see what exactly do we include uh, in our environment to enable us to use the selenium web driver so uh, it's actually uh, as i said it's a it's a framework uh, selenium is a framework so it allows us to uh, interact with different types of browsers to test our application so what exactly it does is uh, it instantiates its own sandbox uh, pardon me if i'm too technical here but what i can uh, in layman terms what i can uh, explain you is these drivers uh, these are nothing but uh, it's selenium's own version of this browser you will see uh, we'll have to download uh, these drivers from their website so what they do is these these are actually this is not the actual i driver installed on your machine it's selenium's own version of this browser it has its own exe it's, it 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 is stored on on on, on a particular path and uh, it instantiates this one and not the browser installed on your machine of course uh, there has to there has to be a browser installed on your machine while you are trying to invoke this browser because uh, there are 
considering uh, the windows operating system there are certain linked libraries which we we have to uh, we have to have present while we instantiate selenium's own version of this browser because what indirectly does it uh, does is it it calls this instance uh, properties only it's not the browser on its own it's just the it's just the remote uh, driver you can say so not the remote driver it's just an uh, instance of this browser and not this browser completely but it seeks help from this browser installation so uh, what exactly uh, how exactly it does is when you instruct selenium to start let's say a chrome driver so what it will do is uh, it will go to the location where you, which you have mentioned where your chrome driver is present it will invoke this Chrome driver exe, and we will definitely see this uh, example wherein I, I invoke my Chrome driver to test our sample script. Uh, so what Chrome driver does is seeking the help of my Chrome browser, which is installed on my machine, is instantiates one one separate instance of that browser, which will be only used for the automation purpose and this browser will not be available to any other application is and as it will be operate, uh, opened on a separate port so you will be able to see that only selenium is able to interact this uh, browser uh, recently i have come across a situation wherein, wherein i have to open up uh, multiple browser instances like oh, i have to open up five chrome drivers so what interesting thing I found out is uh, Selenium opens up every driver with a port number. So let's say when I open uh, five Chrome drivers, it, it gives port number to each of the driver. Let's say 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So what, what is happening on Chrome driver port number 500 will not be accessible to Chrome driver port number 100. So this much of the security is uh, is available when we test our scripts using the Chrome driver. I hope I was uh, clear on this part. So if you don't understand fully now, please uh, don't worry because obviously this is a very vast part. We have to drill, drill down more deep, but because of the limitations, we will not go into uh, too technically. So let's move forward here. So I was talking about the Selenium grid and I explained you a scenario uh, wherein uh, you have to test your application on variety of the browsers. Let's say Selen uh, Firefox, IE, Chrome so, and that sort of thing. So uh, the same can be achieved uh, using Selenium grid. So what exactly is the grid? Uh, as you can see here from making out this diagram, uh, we can we can establish a client server relationship here so hub will act as my server and these nodes will act as my client uh, but in selenium we refer these terms only the hub is this uh, hub is the central point wherein uh, we instantiate and we divert our code to different clients or nodes that are registered on this hub so what what it will enable us to do is uh, one test case will come up on hub and i want to test the same test case on an android mobile phone on an i browser on windows on a firefox on ubuntu machine and on a safari or on mac or on iphone so all this uh, instead of testing once here then going here subsequently moving till here what I can do is I can set up a hub here and I can instruct my hub at a time test all test my one test case on all these of all these nodes at one time. So in this way I'll save my time and at the same uh, time I can verify whether my test is compatible with different browser and environment combinations. Uh, again uh, on the diagram on the right hand side as you can see Again, the same thing. I have some of the automation code written for the Java, Ruby, or Python, or uh, whichever language I'm comfortable. My code then will be sent 
to the selenium grid server this is the hub point and then uh, i'm trying and sending my automation test code to different browsers on the different machines here so again we have windows linux and some mac here so uh, as you can see we have a box for remote control here so uh, one just one change here uh, when we saw this this slide we were talking about the chrome driver firefox driver and i driver and these are the drivers which are available when you when you try and execute uh, your test script on your same machine the code is on the same machine and the browser is also on the same machine but considering the example of party grid this grid server is on machine a and these client boxes are some some other vms or some other physical machines but not the same uh, machine as the server of course uh, the combination uh, of both having on the same machine is also possible but let's not talk about uh, the scenario wherein these two reside on a different machines that are maybe physically different or these are two different separate vms virtual machines so in this case uh, what we will use is the remote remote driver or remote control server so instead of uh, the simple chrome drivers that selenium used to provide now we switch need to switch on the remote driver so that is a basic difference between using the selenium grid and the standalone selenium and i hope i was able to uh, i was i was clear on this part let's move forward and let's see how we can create our first test script uh, i am i'm trying to keep it very simple as i do not want you to indulge into much much of the uh, technicalities and to confuse you so as i said uh, i'll try and keep it very simple but first let us see what all do we need if we want to start with the selenium so first of all we need some sort of ide of course eclipse is my favorite so i'll go with it but there are different types of ides available in market and you can use them for an example intellij id idea is a is a very famous id next to eclipse which is used for coding java and and what not python and everything else so you can use that also but uh, eclipse is the most popular id used and uh, considering that you are trying to do selenium with java so you need java sdk installed and not only the jre because uh, your code needs to be compiled and jre is can just instance the difference between java, jre and jdk uh, sorry uh, jdk is or java sdk is that java sdk allows you to compile your code as well and interpret them but jre can only interpret it by instantiating a jvm for you so it is not it's just an environment and you cannot compile your code with it so uh, after that after installing java we need to have the selenium web driver jar i can show that to you just give me a moment yes so uh, this is the selenium website you can download all uh, requirements just like the selenium web driver the exe and uh, as we saw there that there is a remote control uh, it's a uh, web driver is the successor of remote control so now remote control is totally out of the uh, out of the scope it's not being used very much also we talked about the selenium id it's a firefox add on you can download that too and it will be automatically added uh, to your firefox ex extensions i do not have my firefox working now but I, otherwise i could have showed it to you let's see uh, from where we can download the selenium jar and the other stuff that we need so congratulations now we have selenium 3.0 out but it's still in the beta version but uh, i have been hearing that there are few advancements uh, from 2.0 to 3.0 but uh, not to worry we do have uh, we can download uh, other releases just like the old one that we uh, 2.53 that was available 
so uh, you can download the i driver from this website and also uh, the standalone server uh, jar from here so if you want to download the older versions so uh, uh, and also one interesting thing is uh, you can download selenium for any of the language that you are familiar with so as we saw it supports almost all of the object oriented languages uh, you can download for java c sharp so the libraries will be available for you and i think that's pretty much self explanatory moving on to the drivers you can download a driver for opera you can download the driver for firefox so previously uh, the you previously what was uh, there, the difference was is you need not download a driver for mozilla firefox but with advancements uh, they have changed a bit and now you have to have download for mozilla which is known as the gecko driver uh, and also for chrome driver we have a driver from selenium we have a driver for safari so as you can see we have even we have an uh, support for ios cell android uh, is the is the selenium version for communicating with android and edge for the latest microsoft browsers which replace ie from windows 10 so that's it uh, once downloaded uh, let's let's go ahead and let's get back to the presentation now uh, i can show you how we can uh, so once you download the selenium you will see that the selenium standalone server you need to have on your machine and for this test script i am using the chrome driver exe and we will see that uh, what my test script does is it will it will invoke the chrome driver ext here and it will communicate with my chrome browser internally and but my uh, my test scripts will be executed on my chrome driver so what else do we need uh, for this so instead of firefox uh, we will we'll use chrome and of course as we saw we need to have browser driver versions for ie and chrome okay so let's move forward so this will be our test scenario uh, wherein what i will do is i'll open my chrome browser i'll go to the google.com i'll read text from a file which i have saved on my local box and i'll put that put this text from step 3 in the google search engine search bar and we'll see that uh, my search results are populated as per this text and after waiting for few seconds uh, we'll just close this browser so waiting is not mandatory here but just to uh, make it more visible i have put some 2 uh, to 5 seconds wait instead uh, because uh, it's like uh, when we when we are done with our test scripts the selenium will quit my browser very instantly and you guys might not be able to see exactly what has happened so just to make a, a little pause i have introduced some wait here so let's see exactly what i have done so while looking at the test script please if you are if you feel that you do not know any of the terms please don't get confused you know, we will we'll definitely have a look at them separately so this is my eclipse setup let's open it So Eclipse is uh, loading my box space in which uh, we can automate using Java, and you can even use Eclipse for your automation using Python. So let's just wait for a few seconds for Eclipse to load. Yes, it has loaded. So uh, this is a very very simple script uh, for automating the scenario that we mentioned. uh just to brief up uh, i am using the main method here and not the any of the testing frameworks like the junit or the testng which even are more advanced to do your test automation so using those type of testing frameworks you can take care of uh, what should happen before scenario before your scenario starts and what should happen after your scenario ends what should when should the driver close 
when should the when should your browser quit that all you can manage very very efficiently so uh let's let's see what what we are trying to achieve uh yes so uh this is this is my url which i am going to open so let's let's directly jump on to the web driver here because else we'll run short of the, short of the time so when will the exact flow start so this is my main method and this is a function for reading from the file so for now you can ignore it i can i, I can show you this uh, function once we are done uh, seeing the automation here so first of all what i am doing is uh, as i said i'll be using the chrome driver here so my chrome driver do we have a chat please zoom a little bit okay i'll try my best uh i don't know how to zoom uh jitesh can you help me how can i zoom into our sample script so what i will do is uh, i'll i have uh, i'll use the chrome driver for which as i said i have the chrome driver downloaded and this is the path here i'll be using so i have put the same path as the driver path here so my chrome driver is available at this location so it will uh when i when i instruct the the selenium so this is a main step wherein uh, we we try and open the driver of our choice so this can be chrome driver or as you can see this can be firefox driver as well this can be internet explorer all of your choice but for this uh, for for this example we look at the chrome driver so once this driver is open there is a method we can instruct the driver to open the url which is mentioned here in our case it will be google.com once uh, the url is open uh, this is a very simple step to maximize the driver window and after we are done with that uh, we will use the web element which is which again comes with the selenium so web element is nothing but each and every element which is present on your dom your website so example when i even this link is a web element i'll show you how to identify each and every web element uh, using the locators uh, okay so once that uh, i instruct this i instruct selenium to find me this uh, find me an element which has the id as this lst hyphen iv so uh, let me open up google here it will be more simple for you to understand so okay let's see what do we have for this okay so this is a website that we are targeting here and as i said each and everything on your page is a web element so what i was talking about the id of an element so as we can see here this is my dom structure this is the way the google page is built and for this text box i have the id as lst hyphen iv so the same id i have put here and i am trying to find an element by addressing its id there are different methods to find an element we'll see that in different slides okay so for i can quickly show you how we can find those we can find an element by a class name this class name is the css uh, class that we try and put uh, on uh, any element while we are applying css this is a css selector these two are different uh, this is nothing but uh, the css path for each and every element 
right now we won't go in too detail but we'll try and see that while we are looking at the locators so once i have found that element what i am trying what again i am instructing uh, is is the send uh, i'm i'm telling selenium to send these string on the element that i have so in this case this this text box will be filled with whatever text i so this will to be uh, to wrap it up quickly i can show you that this things will be automated and you will see that this will be done very very quickly so and once it is done i'm doing nothing but just as i said to make it more visible and introduce some weight and i'll quit it so i can show you the file uh, it's in that it's in this location so let's see what's there in this file so right now i have put as applied physics i can change it to applied mathematics and i save this file so let's see how this execution goes so as i have this java file and a main method i'll just run this java application so now you will see uh, my execution has started and there will be one so the chrome browser instantiation has started the chrome browser is up the chrome driver is available which is very similar to my chrome browser so once the chrome browser is open now it will try and maximize the same driver uh, what internally is happening is until and unless the website is completely loaded selenium won't proceed so now as you saw it has put applied mathematics in this field it will take for a few seconds and then it quit so i had instructed all these steps uh, to my selenium we can run again with a different set of values so let's open this file so let's try and search um, selenium tutorials let's see let's run it again so now it instead of applied mathematics it should put selenium tutorials in the search bar of the google so now it's opening the google win, uh, google google.com and as i said uh, till the website is completely loaded selenium won't proceed further it's internal uh, internally that mechanism is handled so now you're able to see it has put it this way my internet is slow so that why it's taking time to uh, show the results so i hope this was a very very simple script that we came across now uh, these queries uh, we'll definitely handle later okay okay uh let's move forward we have an important topic to cover which is the locators so uh as i said uh, any uh, any element on your html page or your website uh, is a, is an is an element which, which you can find out using different methods like the ids id or the uh the css class name that you put or by its name or if it is in hyperlink you can also try and find out with the link text and uh this is an interesting concept of xpath here and also the css selector so xpath is in short form for xml path you can construct uh, an xml uh, path for the element what you are trying to find and we'll see it shortly i'll i'll try and show this uh, with the with the chrome browser itself and also you can try and find out with the css selector so now let's see how we can uh, find each and every how we can find the simple google or what, what let's find this link of uh, 
you'll see SLNM HTML runner. So when I right click on Chrome browser, I have an option of inspect. So when I click on inspect, uh, I'll be able to see uh, this element here. So in this case, uh, I have an anchor tag, which is an hyperlink. And it has the text as Selenium HTML runner. So in this case, my how would I construct my element is uh, I'll just put it here somewhere. So it is a good practice to keep your elements constants because you are definitely you are not gonna change your elements value. So Selenium uses by uh, I mean the elements belong to the by class and you can use all the uh, methods mentioned in the slide like id or its path so let's give it some name like what was it exactly was runner so uh, selenium runner is equals to by dot so when you hit dot you can see you we have it is a link so i can just directly put the selenium runner or whatever we have on the page so this will construct uh, my selenium runner link and i can go ahead and click on uh, this link text of course it will uh, I, I won't be able to show it now but the way i have constructed this element and after uh, after I'm done constructing this element, what I can do is I can instruct it to click. First of all, I need to bind it uh, with, uh, with the similar way it is done. So let's see this one. Okay, so instead of this by dot id search element, I can just put it uh, what selenium runner by element and then i can instruct element to click so this way i can create my element for the selenium runner hyperlink and i can click on it so this was by the link text if i want now the id is not available uh, for this hyperlink and nor the html name so obviously i cannot use it i can use them only if it is available so for an example, you can refer to the ID for this div element as it is already present. And, and if there's name in some of the elements, you can refer them to. So let's see how we can use the XPath for the sim similar elements. So when you right click on this uh, element, you can see there are different uh, options like uh, the copy XPath. So when you copy this, and I'll open a notepad here. So as you can see, uh, this is an XPath for that element, the hyperlink that you are trying to put. So this is nothing but the XML notation here. So if you not, if you're not aware of the XML or the XML different notations, so please don't get confused now. Consider uh, this, that you can work with this. So how XPath exactly works is, uh, let's say, in like in this case, I know the ID of an uh, element, or there is a parent element for which I have some 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 unique identifier, and after which uh, I have four paragraphs, and in the fourth paragraph I have an hyperlink. So let's say tomorrow for uh, tomorrow uh, your website changes and this instead of fourth paragraph this moves to paragraph number one so again uh, you will have to revisit and make this index as one and then then only your automation will work else it will it will not be able to find any any locator and hence it will fail so it is advisable to not go uh, the with the index and it is also known as hanging locators because you're not sure whether it will change or not. And it is advisable to go uh, to, to the last level of the locator using some identifiers like text or using some, uh, some unique identifiers. 
so when it comes to hyperlink you can definitely try and find out with the link text but when there are few there are certain cases in which you do not uh, have uh, a link text or let's say it is a list element and it is a, just a plain text so let's say it is a list element so what you will try and do is you will you can try and find out this list element based on some text so one one simple uh, method i can show you is you are trying to find an element based on the text so you will call the text function and you will see whether it contains selenium or not so it will be a list element after this main content in the paragraph containing the selenium now you can still eliminate it by putting removing this so if you are sure that all the lists contain the different text values so you can just put the the text here directly and it will give you the results so now you have your locator is completely independent of your changing structures and even if uh, this list moves to paragraph number 6 or 7 you are not uh, you will not be worried because you have eliminated the need for that paragraph so with this uh, we can conclude that the previous uh, expert that we saw i think it was like some p of 4 so i'll copy this again so expats are of two types this one which gives you the entire uh, numbering and the in from start till end if you have specified each and every element you can term it as absolute expat and uh then this case where i can eliminate uh, this need and i can i what i am trying to instruct is after the element which has id as the main content in this case it is div you find out a list item which contains text as selenium so this we can term as relative path because we are not we are not specifying each and every element here and to be very specific we are not uh numbering the uh, the indexes here so these are the two two forms of the expat that we saw and when you will work with selenium you will you will come across many situations wherein you do not have id or name and you still have to go with some approaches so expat is one of them another approach we can look at is the css so let's see when you go on to the copy and you call click on copy selector so now you will be able to see that this is the css path for that same link so again as i said uh, when it is a hyperlink you will ha you have one more advantage to refer directly to its link text but when it is in some li or some just a span which contain some text so now as you can see all these notations have changed to css and if you are aware id ids in css are referred with hash and if it if it is a class it is referred by a dot so what is it what it is trying to instruct is go uh, in the main in the element with id main content sixth child has a span so we are trying to refer to this span this is a difference between these of uh, these two uh, methodologies to find elements uh, mm, it is preferred to use the css selectors and when you will try and dig deep in the in the css selector you will see many many convenient methods and very effective ways to find uh, elements you can also traverse from child to uh, parent in the case of uh, css of course that is a way far now so uh, we'll try and look more into it uh, i'll answer these questions uh, when soon we'll have a q and a session so it's just few minutes from now so let's uh, let's just complete uh, what are we trying to achieve here just few minutes please
and I'll we'll answer all these questions. Okay, uh, we covered ID, and also I can show you a quick example of class name here. Just help me uh, find a class. So we we have name also here. So similarly, uh, we, we you might have come across uh, an element in which there is a class applied here instead of name. So that we can refer using the refer using the class name. See the class name. So I think we covered all of them. So just now finish the remaining part, and then we can jump to the Q and A session. Okay. So guys, what we saw, what we saw was a very simple uh, Selenium script, but uh, that is not just the limited one. Uh, of course, when we try and uh, automate uh, an application end to end manner, we need some sort of guidelines uh, we need some sort of protocol that everyone should follow and by everyone i mean that uh, considering that your team has let's say 10 automation testers so it is it is not allowed for every of the automation tester to code in its own way of course there has to be some set of guidelines so and those set of guidelines are, are nothing but is nothing but the framework so uh, to be very in a very uh, layman language, what what framework consists of is some method or some architecture which can incorporate your automation code, your testing framework. This can be either TestNG or JUnit, and also it can accommodate your test data because there can be no testing without test data you have to be very specific and you have to handle it uh, in a very effective manner so maybe reading from excel excel files or reading from text files or xml files picture files all those are considered to be a test data one important part part of the framework is the reporting because ultimately when your test suit is complete when your 500 or 1000 tests are complete you won't go and see the execution results by opening the ID and visiting each and every Java file or your console, Eclipse console. But instead, your client stakeholders or even as an automation engineer, you will also just be concerned about the HTML reports, sorry, or any kind of a report that you can make. So it will just give you an statistics of how much failed, what was errors and how many test cases passed. And it will give you a clear games, glimpse of your application under test, your builds. And another important feature is the log file. So uh, you can log instances like your, uh, any of the exceptions you came across while automating, like finding an element, the element was not found, or uh, you're trying to open up a file or trying to download a file. So that file did not get downloaded and you do not uh, want to abrupt your test execution. So you can handle that using logs and exception. So this is a very basics about framework and reporting and I hope uh, I made myself clear. Yeah, uh, yes guys, uh, now we can start with the Q&A session. So let's first have the questions that were asked before. Yes. Of course, uh, Sharmila, you had asked that can we use a property file to uh, forward? Yeah, for URL. Yes, definitely you can use it. For now, to show the method, I I put here only, but I can uh, I cannot show you now. I do not have the code now, but yes, uh, sorry, uh, you can. You can put the elements, uh, sorry, put information like URLs or what test case file you need to run or what should be the what should be the uh, driver location or even what should be the report location. All you can drive using the property file. Uh, Shamila, again for your question, you can use Firebug or any other uh, uh, I, I, element identifier tools there are n number of tools that are available with many browsers 
So Chrome has and even Firefox or even IE has an inbuilt way to inspect the element. So you can definitely do that too. I hope uh, I've answered your query, Shamila. Uh, what all? What other questions do we have, guys? Correct way to use a Firefox or any other basic way to inspect. Uh, so, Kushal, uh, the basic example that you saw, uh, just to delete a file and to uh, to put that file in the in the Google. So, as you can see, it is just a simple Java code, and I have not applied any of the oops fundamentals here, like the inheritance or the polymorphism. But uh, so. And instead of reading this from a file, I can directly mention here. So as I can, mm, so I can just mention as a string here. So that will even ease. Uh, just to begin with, you can do that too because as you can see, you might have to learn more of the Java I/O to while you try and read from a file. So just start with the basic discussion and. Try and automate websites like Amazon or Flipkart because uh, you will be able to see that those websites are built with the latest of the technologies and you will have much more improved hands on when you do that. Uh, is that answer sufficient, Kushal, or you want me to elaborate more? Okay, good. Uh, what else, guys? Hello, Dilaj. I have one question. Uh, can you please type? I'm not able to hear you properly. Okay, sure. to have our locators and it is just a notation uh, we are trying our web driver to find that find us an element so internally when you when you use the by function with any of these properties you are nothing but trying to find that element only so that element itself is a locator for you so I don't know if you if, if there's still a confusion between you have for locator Yes, of course, uh, you can do this from console. I can show that to you. Uh, yes. Uh, first, let's uh, see question from Utkarsh. So Utkarsh is asking that when execute the script in Firefox, uh, then Skype website open in new tab. Yes, uh, Utkarsh, it is possible, but you need to have some different handles. You have to uh, instead of opening a new window, you have to instruct uh, Selenium to to open up a new tab for you, and then op uh, pass on that URL the Skype website for you. So that way you can uh, you can you can do that. Uh, you can definitely Google more about it, but right now let's cover other questions too. So you want uh, if you want to find out a locator with the chrome console so i'll we'll again switch here so for an x path i can so this is not an li of course we have a here so what i will do is i'll go to console and to find an element i am showing you an example of finding an element using x path so I can put dollar $x here and I can put my x path in the double quotes and when you hit enter uh -oh, 
I think it's double double quotes here. So I'll replace this with the single quotes. So now, as you can see in Chrome console, by mentioning the X path in the dollar X, I'm still able to get the same element which I was trying to find here. So this way, even I can verify whether if there is any absolute or if there is any relative X path I'm trying to target if it is the correct one or not. So as uh, I talked about uh, the X path with the absolute X path and the relative X path. So now let's try and find out this A element with the text. So as I showed, so text is the function you can use. So now, as you can see, I just replaced this with the apps, uh, with the relative X part, and I'm still able to get the same uh, web element I'm trying to target. So as I said earlier, if I know uh, some unique identifier for the parent element, and I I can traverse uh, from that element, I can traverse to any of the child element and try and identify it uniquely using different functions like text class there are multiple methods i hope my explanation was clear any other questions please okay uh, no from console you cannot click obviously you need to have a web element or the driver to do it for you okay ankit rathod has a question for the one query the reports which we have to make after testing is it version dependent or version independent of the excel or in the reporting format uh, ankit i'm not sure what exactly is your question uh, for reporting you can even write a custom class to make html reports for you so that will definitely wave off the possibilities for the different versions of excel and uh, you can if you want to tweak more around it uh, you can uh, you can even embed some screenshots for failures that way you have you can have more more useful reports here but uh, i'm not i'm not able to understand uh, how are you trying to relate the version dependency of excel with your report so as far as I can suggest, please write some custom HTML formatting, uh, maybe a simple Java class, and you will find a bit, uh, good examples on Google. So you can do, you can approach that way. Uh, was was your answer was your query answered, and Kit? Okay. Okay. So, if I want to change programming language while coding, then is it possible to swap, or that it should be decided in advance while installing Selenium? So, uh, if you are trying to say that once I've written some automation code in Java, and then uh, I have to switch to .NET for an example, so I can in my opinion that won't be a feasible solution or a feasible decision because you have designed your framework and entire architecture pertaining keeping in mind some environment restrictions or some uh, dependencies with the language too and uh, but while you try while you talk about uh, switching a programming language that definitely will involve writing each and everything from scratch. So that will that will surely take some more efforts, and in many organizational sessional situations, it will not be allowed. Yes, of course, <laughs> I'm coming back to that. And Kushal, uh, you can Google about installing TestNG on Eclipse, but there are you can do it. Uh, from 
let's see i'll try and show that to you uh you can go to the help you can go to eclipse marketplace right now i think it is already installed on my machine so it might it might be shown as the installed one so let's find test ng here and when you search it you should get some uh some results for the test ng please bear with my slow internet it's taking some time today yes so as you can see when you search test ng on the eclipse marketplace you will get an option to install it here so you can just click on install and it will install it for you okay and about installing the selenium server uh, what what was the question was it selenium grid or server and try and open the chat window uh yeah selenium grid so uh for selenium grid you need to have this uh selenium server uh jar on your machine of course java should be installed and then using the commands to uh to to open this jar as a hub or the node you can start your selenium server so uh one more thing uh, this this jar itself can help you at the selenium selenium grid hub or selenium grid grid node so that way you can just put this jar on different machines and you can instantiate uh, a, a node or an hub in whatever manner you want about uh, changing the code uh, what i can suggest you is maybe you can find some ways to port your code but when that if you are uh, if you are okay with that then it will it 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 will solve your purpose but other way around is to write your code again if you are not okay porting your code yeah there are some external applications that can help you porting your code from one language to another how selenium grid is different from parallel execution of testing selenium grid will uh, will help you in execution of uh, in parallel execution of your testing as i said earlier uh, nowadays uh, there are many requirements for compatibility testing to see whether your application how is how it behaves in, in windows in linux in macbook or on chrome or browse on so, uh, firefox or on safari so having these combinations of browsers and uh, operating systems you can construct a grid architecture and then you can achieve your parallel execution with this, with the help of that grid architecture so grid is actually a way to achieve the parallel execution to obviously to save time is a query answered okay uh yes i i'll ask jitesh if he has something test ng so if you if you are able to do it yes yes you can do that i have not used test ng to do the parallel execution i have used maven to perform my parallel executions and also some sort of uh uh um, some different frameworks which i work on jbehave in that way so if you if you have done earlier with test ng then definitely you can share with us also hp okay what else do we have guys
we have two minutes left. No, uh, test ng is not is not the sole for the report purpose. Actually, test ng is the testing framework in which, as I said, in which you can uh, make it more customized. Like, uh, what should happen when the scenario is starting? What should happen when the scenario should end? And also, uh, yes, reporting is an advantage. And also, I mean, it it is actually comprised of execution of your test and the reporting as well so not just for the reporting purpose obviously even you can configure your test framework uh, in a way that whenever you are executing some test so it should be able to pop up the name of the scenario you are trying to execute even you can do that oh yes uh, you can talk to uh, 